Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's New York City Tax Tuesday session that focuses on church and faith-based organizations. Today's session is being brought to you in partnership with Congresswoman Yvette Clark's office. So many thanks to her staff and Mr. Ross for helping make this live stream possible. My name is Carolyn Singh, and I'm a congressional liaison with the IRS Office of Legislative Affairs. I'm joined by my colleague, Samaria Saliba, from the Taxpayer Advocate Service, and Sam will introduce herself shortly. Uh, today, we'll also have an opportunity to hear about VitaSite partner programs at Brooklyn College, as well as Medgar Evers. Uh, Professor Benjamin Langer will join us, and we extend thanks to the Medgar Evers team as well. Um, notably, uh, Dr. Patricia Ramsey, president of Medgar Evers College, uh, Dr. Joan Roll, dean of the School of Business, Dr. Rosemary Williams, who we'll hear from later on, uh, Dr. Williams heads up the VITA program at Medgar Evers, and many thanks to Drs. Adela Durham and Evelyn Castro, who are also involved in the VITA program, as well as uh, Dr. Castro, who is Dean of the School of Professional and Community Development. So before we dive in, I'll note that the resources we'll discuss are available online, and we're happy to make today's slides available to anyone who requests it. Towards the end of the presentation, we'll also open it up for uh, questions and we'll take your questions during that time. Uh, so we ask that you submit your questions if you haven't already. Let's go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So the, 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 the topics we'll cover today will focus on tax considerations for churches and religious organizations. Um, we'll touch on information about the life cycle of an exempt organization, as well as a number of resources and training opportunities available uh, through the IRS. Um, we're also going to discuss some tax considerations for individuals. And since it is filing season, we'll share some important filing season reminders, as well as information about coronavirus tax relief and free resources for anyone looking for help with tax preparation. And then lastly, um, Sam will share information about the Taxpayer Advocate Service and how you can get help if you're having a problem with the IRS. Next slide, please. Okay, so with that, we'll go ahead and, and turn it over to Sam. Thanks, Carolyn. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Samaria Saliba, and I am the manager for the Manhattan TAS office. Um, the LTA, local taxpayer advocate, but Saida Bailey was unable to join us today, but I will definitely share this information uh, with her. Thank you uh, for having us, and um, thank you for attending. I hope you find this information useful. Um, I will go on to talk a little bit about churches uh, and religious organizations. Next slide, please. Starting out, state law governs nonprofit status, which is determined by an organization's articles of incorporation or trust documents. Federal law governs tax exempt status. The Internal Revenue Code specifically refers to exemption from federal income tax. The first thing the organization has to do is determine what type of organization they are. Are they a trust? Are they a corporation? Or are they an association? That is definitely very important um, to start off. Next thing the organization needs to do is um, get an EIN number, an employer identification number. You can apply and get an EIA, EIN online by fax or by mail by submitting a complete form SS4. Applying for an exemption. To apply for recognition by the IRS of exempt status under Section 501c3 of the code, use Form 1023. The application must be submitted electronically and must include the appropriate user fees. Applications are processed as quickly as possible by the IRS. The process can be delayed, however, for reasons ranging from simple errors on the application to issues concerning the qualifications of the organization for the exemption. To find out the status of the current application, there is a Where's My Application uh, link on irs.gov. Required filings. 
In general, exempt organizations are required to file annual returns, although there are many exceptions. If an organization does not file a required return or files late, the IRS may assess penalties. In addition, if an organization does not file as required for three consecutive years, it automatically loses its tax-exempt status. But like I said before, there are many exceptions to this rule. Ongoing compliance. A Section 501c3 organization will jeopardize its exemption if it ceases to operate exclusively for exempt purposes. An organization is operated exclusively for exempt purposes only if it engages primarily in activities that accomplish the exempt purpose specified in Section 501c3. Every employer, including an organization exempt from federal income tax who pays wages to employees, is responsible for withholding, depositing, paying, and reporting federal employment taxes, including federal income tax, Social Security, and medical, Medicare FICA taxes, and federal unemployment tax, which is also called FUTA, unless that employer is specifically accepted by law from those requirements or if the taxes clearly do not apply. These taxes generally apply to payment of compensation to employees. Significant events, uh, audits. The goal of the exempt organization's examination program is to promote voluntary compliance by analyzing operational and financial activities of exempt organizations. As in any IRS examination of taxpayer returns, Exempt organizations undergoing examinations have certain rights, as explained in Publication 1. Issues in an audit may include an organization's tax-exempt status and private foundation classification, whether it is paid unemployment taxes and tax on unrelated business income when required, and whether it filed required returns and reports. Procedures for examinations are explained in greater detail in Publication 892, if anyone is interested to look that up. Uh, terminations. Internal Revenue Code Section 6043B established rules for when an exempt organization must notify the IRS that it has undergone liquidation, dissolution, termination, or substantial contraction. Generally, most organizations must notify the IRS when they terminate. Among other things, notice to the IRS of termination will close the organization's account in the IRS records. Uh, next slide, please. Five hundred one C three status uh, churches, including integrated auxiliaries and conventions or associations of churches that meet the requirements of Section five hundred one C three are automatically considered tax exempt and are not required to apply for obtaining recognition of exempt status from the IRS. Donors are allowed to claim a charitable deduction for donations to a church that meets the Section 501c3 requirements, even though the church has neither sought nor received IRS recognition that is tax exempt. For more information, um, I definitely recommend that you see and pull up publication 1828 which is the tax guide for churches and religious organizations. There is great information in that pub. Uh, unrelated business income, uh, income from a trade or business regularly carried on that is not substantially related to the charitable, educational, or other purpose that is the basis of the organization's exception must be reported. An exempt organization that has $1,000 or more of gross income from an unrelated business must file Form 990T and an organization must pay estimated tax if it expects that its tax for the year to be $500 or more. Next slide, please. Filing requirements. Churches, some church-affiliated organizations and certain other types of organizations are accepted from filing. Uh, political campaigning uh, restrictions under the Internal Revenue Code. All Section 501c3 organizations are absolutely prohibited from directly or indirectly participating in or intervening in any political campaign on behalf or in opposition to any candidate for elected public office. Special rules limiting the IRS for audits of churches. Congress has imposed special limitations found in Section 7611 of the IRC 
on how and when the IRS may conduct civil tax inquiries and examinations of churches. The IRS may begin a church tax inquiry only if the appropriate high-level treasury official reasonably believes on the basis of facts and circumstances recorded in writing that an organization claiming to be a church or convention or association of churches may not qualify for the exemption, may be carrying an unrelated trade or business within the meaning of IRC 513, may otherwise be engaged in taxable activities, or may have entered into IRC 4958 excess benefit transaction with a disqualified person. Next slide, please. This slide just has uh, resources and training if anybody is interested. Um, the application process step by step is um, on that link. There is also a webinar for churches and religious organizations. Um, very interesting, lots of great information. Also, another link to small businesses and self-employed tax centers, where, like I said, you'll also find um, a lot of relevant information, um, frequently asked questions as well in these links. And I will pass it over on to Carolyn. All right, thank you so much, Samaria. So next we'll, we'll discuss filing season reminders for individuals. Um, this is a lot of helpful information uh, for parishioners as well as uh, community members interested in sharing this as well. Um, so to give you a sense of where we are in the filing season, and there are several important dates to keep in mind. Um, April 18th is the due date to file 2021 returns or to request an extension and to pay tax owed due in most states, including New York. And October 17th is the due date to file for those requesting an extension on their returns. So those are very important dates to keep in mind. And most importantly, is the April 18th deadline for individuals that is soon approaching. Next slide, please. Okay. So along with numerous online resources to help with filing, the IRS is highlighting important tips to help taxpayers. Uh, first is to file electronically and use direct deposit. Uh, for anyone needing help with direct deposit, we have resources to help online. The next important reminder uh, we're sharing with taxpayers is that they gather and organize tax records to ensure accurate returns are filed. As filing season is progressing, the IRS is seeing signs of a number of common errors, including taxpayers claiming incorrect amounts of the recovery rebate credit, as well as the child tax credit. In addition to ensuring these amounts are correct, we're emphasizing that taxpayers take extra care to use the correct filing status, um, to report all taxable income, to include unemployment compensation, and double check things like names, date of birth, social security numbers, uh, banking information, the routing and the account numbers, as well as addresses, and of course, sign and date the return. Those are um, easy steps that are, are good to double check before submitting the return. The next important reminder that we're um, sharing with taxpayers is to use the online resources on irs.gov as there are many answers to questions as well as tools to help determine eligibility for certain credits, for example. Um, and then another important reminder that we're sharing with taxpayers are for those with a 2020 return still in process with the IRS, uh, make sure that you enter $0 for last year's adjusted gross income on the 2021 tax return. And for those who use a non-filer tool to register for um, the advanced child tax credit or the third economic impact payment, they should enter $1 as their prior year's adjusted gross income. And everyone else whose returns were processed, they can just go ahead and use the AGI from last year's return. And then, of course, um, the, the probably the most helpful reminder that we have is that there are free filing products available. Uh, a number of them are available in English and Spanish. And I know that some of our partners from Medgar Evers and Brooklyn College will share more about some of the work that they're doing locally. So I won't spend too much time on that. Next slide, please. So for tax year 2021, there are also several child-related tax credits that you may be eligible for. Um, the child tax credit um, is, is one that we have raised awareness about throughout 
most of last year. Um, under the American Rescue Plan, the credit was expanded for 2021 to get more help to more families. Um, it's gone from $2,000 per eligible child to $3,600 for each child under age six. And for each child ages six to 16, it increased from 2000 to $3,000. So that's an important uh, credit and we encourage uh, taxpayers to claim the credit if they're eligible. And if there are any questions about eligibility, we have resources on irs.gov to help determine uh, whether you're eligible to receive this as well as any of the other credits I'll touch on. Um, the next credit I wanted to mention was the earned income tax credit. Uh, for this credit, uh, one of the important changes for this for 2021 is that you do not need to have a child in order to claim the credit. And then the child independent care credit, um, for example, for 2021, the American Rescue Plan made this credit more generous. So now up to $4,000 for one qualifying person and $8,000 for two or more qualifying persons is available. Um, additionally, there are other tax credits, deductions, and things like savings plans that can help taxpayers with their expenses for higher education. More information is available on irs.gov. Um, it's also important to, inclu to include unemployment compensation as income this year. I touched on that earlier, but I wanted to reiterate that although a special law allowed taxpayers to exclude unemployment and compensation from taxes in 2020, it was only for that year. So unemployment compensation received in 2021 is generally taxable, so taxpayers should be sure to include that as income on their tax returns. Next slide, please. Okay, so to help with free... Um, with tax preparation, uh, th th these are links and telephone numbers for some of the free resources. Um, free tax prep help is available through the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program as well as the Tax Counseling for the Elderly Program. And tax preparation, uh, free tax prep help is also available for, through the Free File Program. And more information about those are avail is available online. Next slide, please. So yesterday, we announced that as federal tax filing deadline approaches, uh, later this month, many taxpayer assistance centers will be open around the country this Saturday, April 9th, for face-to-face -face help. Uh, this special Saturday, help is available from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., and no appointment is needed. Uh, for anyone who plans to attend, uh, please come prepared with the appropriate paperwork, uh, things like any IRS letters or notices you received and related tax and financial documents such as W-2s, 1099s, um, as well as social security cards and or I-10s for members of your household, as well as cur current government issued photo identification. Uh, more information is available at irs.gov forward slash Saturday hours. And that link is also available on the slide. Next slide, please. So to help with filing returns, we also wanted to highlight resources are available in more than 300 languages and taxpayers have the option to request the IRS communicate with them in languages other than English. Uh, for example, if you speak uh, Russian, Haitian Creole, Spanish, Vietnamese, Bengali, Chinese, and, and many more languages, do not hesitate to ask for tax information in those languages. Um, and there's also the option to view irs.gov in other languages. Um, we have a, a limited number available right now, but are expanding those as well. So if you go to irs.gov, on the top of the uh, browser, you have the option to select the language you'd like to view the information in. Next slide, please. Okay, so we also have an IRS app that allows you to check your refund status, make a payment, find free tax prep assistance, as well as sign up for other helpful tax tips. Um, if you receive alerts from the IRS, you might have seen recently uh, an, a 
release about $1.5 billion in unclaimed refunds for about 1.5 million taxpayers who did not file a 2018 Form 1040. So if someone has not filed a 2018 return, um, it's possible that there might be a refund that they have not claimed yet. Um, in addition, we recently announced a voice and chatbot system to assist taxpayers by telephone as well as on irs.gov. Um, this enables taxpayers with simple payment or collection notice questions um, really to help them get what's needed quickly. And some of these features are available in English as well as Spanish. And generally, we really do encourage taxpayers to make irs.gov sort of your first stop where, where you'll find tools to help with the tax filing season as well as throughout the year. Um, those resources are free and they're available throughout the year. Next slide, please. So this slide just provides some links with, with more of the resources, some of what we've mentioned thus far. And one I certainly wanted to highlight is the IRS Small Business and Self-Employed Tax Center. Um, it's a great resource for businesses to get help with preparing taxes, starting a business, and more. Uh, the center also offers webinars and online learning opportunities, some of which are available in English and Spanish. Next slide, please. Okay, and I also wanted to mention that the IRS recently announced uh, thousands of positions will be filled to help with return backlogs as well as technology modernization. Um, IRS-wide vacancies are listed on USA Jobs as well as on our IRS Careers website. Uh, we're also holding virtual recruitment sessions and direct hiring events, so we encourage you to share this information with any job seeker. Next slide, please. Okay. And one of the last pieces of information I wanted to share is that as the April 18th deadline approaches, we have two more sessions in this New York City virtual tax series um, that the IRS and the Taxpayer Advocate Service are hosting. Uh, each Tuesday, we'll discuss tax, tip, tax tips and focus topics, and we'll also answer your questions. So if you have trouble getting answers to any questions, we really do encourage you to join those sessions. Uh, upcoming sessions, the two remaining sessions, will touch on avoiding scams, um, obtaining and using an ITIN, limited English proficiency resources, and what to do if you miss or expect to miss the filing deadline. Uh, the logon information is available on the screen as well. So with that, I'll stop here and turn it back to Samaria to share some information about the Taxpayer Advocate Service. Next slide, please. Thank you. I just wanted to share some information about the Taxpayer Advocate Service. Um, maybe you are aware of what we do and the services that we provide. Um, next slide. So TAS is your voice um, at the IRS. TAS accomplishes its mission by resolving taxpayers' problems accurately and timely, protecting taxpayers' rights, reducing taxpayer burden, becoming a known tax member organization, and enhancing taxpayer access. TAS employees assist taxpayers who are experiencing an economic harm, who are seeking help in resolving tax problems that have not been resolved through normal channels or who believes that an IRS system or procedure is not working as well as it should. TAS employees share the responsibility with all IRS personnel to ensure taxpayer rights are considered and protected in all cases. Our mission includes ensuring taxpayers have access to necessary information and services and receive clear, correct responses to inquiries. Like I said before, I'm not sure if any of you um, have had an opportunity to ever work with us, um, but I wanted to share um, the website. It's on this slide. Also, uh, the toll-free number that we have for the office, um, you know, 877-777-4778. If any of you have a tax-related issue, concern, something that has been unresolved that you cannot correct on your own, or you're just having a hard time getting through. Um, definitely give us a call. What would happen is that we would um, assign your case to one particular case advocate that will work with you from beginning to end, um, depending on location and, and where you live, okay? 
Um, a lot of IRS offices are still remain closed or, and the ones that are open are not running uh, at full capacity. So having that uh, personal um, relationship with someone on, on this side uh, definitely helps. Uh, we try to expedite the matters depending on the um, hardship that you are having. But like I said before, uh, if you have any issues, concerns, any tax questions, um, give us a call. And um, if we cannot assist, we can at least um, direct you in, in, in the right place to go if it's something that we do not do. Okay, uh, next slide. And that is the end of um, our presentation. So, Carolyn, I'm not sure if uh, the Medgar Edgars College wants to resume. Okay, thank you so much, Sam. So now we'll go ahead and turn it over to Dr. Williams, Associate Professor and Chair of the Accounting Department at Medgar Evers, as well as Head of the VITA Program to share some information about their work. Dr. Williams, your line is muted. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you from Meg on behalf of Meg Evers College and the VITA team. I bring greetings to you this afternoon and hope to, to, to shed some light of what's taken place at Meg Evers College. As you may or may not know, this program has been at the college going on 30 years and we prepare taxes. Actually, we start, we start with training. We, we are a site where we train volunteers for the IRS. So we start this, this training the first Saturday in the new year. So this is done primarily, the training is done by Professor Durnham, and we prepare taxes until the deadline. Now, the first slides will give you the information of for, from COVID. We never stopped preparing taxes from COVID, but it went virtual. So we are preparing the taxes virtual for 2022. The program offers tax preparation to the entire, to let's say to the whole city, the entire city. So the five boroughs, and we have customers coming from all over. Our, for this year, we are closing on Saturday, April 16th. And we meet every Saturday and Sunday. We also offer a second program in conjunction with New York State. And it's called a facility self-assistance, meaning if you are capable of preparing your returns on your own and you just want advice on you know tweaking it or, or putting something in we have the new york state professionals on fridays that can assist you with this uh, the third thing is we our volunteers are Primarily alums, students, and occasionally we get assistance with from the IRS if someone wants to work at our Mega Evers College site. The I am not sure if Professor Durnham wants to add anything to what I have stated, but what we are doing now, we are using Tax Slayer and all the, the preparations, your documents have to be uploaded primarily through Tax Slayer. And appointments are given to the taxpayers to come to come in virtually 
at specific times. I'm not sure if Professor Dunham wants to say anything about that. Okay, thanks, Dr. Williams. So um, if we could move the slide forward, is that possible by any chance? Okay. Um, so this this slide shows um, that um, the taxes are done in uh, for the entire community. So there's no um, there's no tax limit on what we do or who we serve. We take every and any and everyone um, that once you come to Mega, you are allowed to come here and do your taxes. So that's totally fine. We are open to the entire public. Can you move this slide forward one more time? Um, this is a general information on the actual um, services that we provide. Um, yeah, as you can see, we provide the fully assisted program just on Saturdays and Sundays. These are every other Sunday we are open and the hours are from 10 to 3. Um, the facilitated program is actually on Fridays only with, in a, with the um, New York State. The facilitated program is all is in conjunction with New York um, State, as Professor says. And there's a link for that if anybody wants the information and our contact information is available for that. Um, so this is really great information that our entire flyer just actually just says everything about our program. And can you move the flyer one more time, please? Thanks. And here is our contact information. If anybody has any questions on the program and the services that we offer, um, we always answer our phones and we're happy to help anybody in terms of the program. Um, all is welcome on whatever questions that you have. I am always here to answer the question. Feel free to reach us by email or by phone and we're always here to help. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Williams and Dr. Durham. Um, that's very helpful information. Um, I believe we are waiting on our Brooklyn College presenter, Dr. I'm actually Nathan. on. Uh, you don't see my picture. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Perfect. Okay. Welcome. Professor Ben Langer. Yeah, I just got on. I had another meeting till 1.30. So I didn't hear what was going on before. Um, just want to update you on what Brooklyn College is doing because we do a VITA program with students getting three three full credits for participating in the VITA program, um, getting three accounting credits. This year for 20, this year we are doing it live and in person and we are getting a lot of uh, um, clients coming to uh, the Flatbush Public Library, which is near uh, a congressperson's uh, Yvette Clark's office, actually. So we're, we're getting a lot of traffic there. We, we do it three days a week, seven to eight hours a day. So we're doing um, 20 to 25 hours a week at Flatbush Public uh, Library. Um, so that's what we're doing. Hello? Okay, thank you yeah. very much. Sure. Thank and I'm you here to much. answer any questions. I'll be here to the end. Okay, perfect. Well, with that, we'll go ahead and start taking your questions. Uh, we received a number of questions, so we'll try to get to as many of them as possible. Uh, the first question, uh, are the slides available for distribution? Yes, uh, we will make sure that you get those slides, um, depending on how you heard about today's event. Um, please feel free to reach out to uh, Congresswoman Clark's office, and we'll be sure to get those routed to you and any of the participants as well. Um, we have another question. What are the hours of operation for the for the VITA sites, both at Medgar Evers and Brooklyn College? Well, I can answer for uh, Brooklyn College. Um, again, it's Ben Langer here. Um, in Brooklyn College, that's limited access, so the public can't really come in there. 
uh, neither can uh, alumni right now. Uh, that will change for the next tax year. Um, the hours in, uh, in Flatbush Public Library are uh, Tuesdays from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. and Friday and Saturdays from uh, 10 a.m. to 5 or 6 p.m. Those are our hours. Um, and we only have, what, two weeks, less than two weeks to go. We'll be actually open at Flatbush Public Library on Monday, April 18th, which is the last date to file this year. It's usually April 15th this year, April 18th. We'll be there at Flatbush Public Library. Um, I'm not sure that we'll be open on Good Friday. I'll have to find out, which is April Friday, April 15th. I don't know if we're open on that day. Okay, thank you so much. And then I, I know that some of the MedGravers information was shared before, but uh, for anyone who missed it, um, could you please remind them of the hours? Definitely. Thank you. So for the facilitated um, FSA program, self-assisted program, um, you have to make an appointment for that. It's a Friday program. And the sessions are held between 10 to 1, the first session. There are two sessions a day. And the second session is from 2 to 5. And that program is open up until April 15th. Once again, there are two sessions. The first session is 10 to 1, and the second session is 2 to 5. Now, the, the fully um, assisted program where we actually do the prepare the tax returns for individuals on Saturdays and Sundays, we open at 10 and we go all the way to 3. Once you are registered at 3 o'clock, we, we remain with you until your taxes are completed. So you just need to register and be on an appointment between the hours of 10 to 3. Okay, thank you very much. So the next question received here is for, for individuals who filed returns, um, one person here mentioned filing on February 1st and has not yet received any information about their refund, how and what uh, should be done. Um, Sam, is this a question you can take? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I always say this, every case is different, um, but generally speaking, if you filed an electronic return and you have not received your refund within 21 days of filing, there is generally an issue, okay? So I would say either reach out to customer service if you can get through. If customer service is an issue due to volume and you have any type of hardship, um, whether it's you're behind on your utilities, you're having issues with an eviction, you're behind on your rent, then give the taxpayer advocate service a call. See if you can get in and get an advocate that will help you. Sometimes it's just, it, it, sometimes it's not a general delay it may be a form is missing. It may be um, that they're looking for a particular schedule. Something is um, entered incorrectly and they need to know and correct it. Um, however, if you don't reach out and you just wait till the return is worked in order, it may be months. So I would say definitely either reach out directly to customer service of the IRS or reach out to the taxpayer advocate office and open up a case so we can assist you to find out what's going on so you can resolve your problem. Yeah, th thank you, Sam. And one one other uh, feature we have online on irs.gov that I'll mention is the ability to access your account online. Uh, you can look up information there as well about your account. So that's also something that we encourage you to take a look at on irs.gov. Okay, so another question we received is, is there a hotline designed for faith-based organizations? Okay, and I would say, um, and this is Sam, uh, there is a customer service line that you can call if you need um, any information, need assistance or guidance. That exempt organization customer service line is 877-829-5500. And I'll repeat that. It is 877-829-5500. All right. 
Thank you very much. Okay, and another question we have here, uh, are assisters available at the Medgar Evers and Brooklyn uh, Vita sites in with translation services? Uh, Spanish is the specific language that, that was asked about. Um, this is from Brooklyn College, Ben Langer. Um, the answer is we have students who speak uh, who speak Spanish, and uh, we actually have input forms in Spanish also. We have students who speak Russian, and we have uh, students who speak uh, you know, Mandarin or Cantonese also. So we have students, and we have Haitian students also who I assume speak Creole. Um, so we do have uh, students who speak different languages. So take the, we urge people to take advantage of them. Mm -hmm. of that service yes yeah that's great information thank you and what about medgar evers um no we do not offer any bilingual services at mega we only do english speaking mm -hmm. okay thank you so much okay and then another question we received uh, this um sam this relates to something you covered uh how can organizations be in compliance with IRS faith-based requirements? Yeah, I covered that um, also in the slides, as you mentioned. Um, if there is a, a filing requirement, as I mentioned before, of the 990, that's definitely it's an, an informational return that may have to be submitted, like I said, depending on the exemptions. So that's the way that to keep in compliance, sending in even those information returned as needed so um, your filing uh, status isn't uh, terminated. That's definitely very important. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we received another question. Uh, someone having um, a trouble accessing their online IRS account. Um, it keeps saying that their social security number is invalid. Um, if you are having trouble with the online verification, uh, you are you, you have a few options. Um, you can contact the one of the taxpayer assistance centers uh, for more help. Um, and if the if getting an appointment is not convenient for you, you can also contact the 800 number for the IRS um, and someone will be able to assist with that. Okay. All right, so we have another question. Um, this one relates to the faith-based organizations. Um, for those of us who use our personal finances to assist families, especially during the beginning of the COVID pandemic, uh, how will we be financially compensated? Maybe I can jump in, Carolyn, on this one. Um, for any donations or charitable contributions, um, for the people filing an individual return, you can always take a deduction on uh, your return. Uh, however, um, this is only allowed if you are itemizing your deductions. If you are filing with a standard deduction, unfortunately, there's no place to add those charitable contributions. But if you are itemizing on Schedule A, and then that's where uh, you may qualify to add that as a deduction. Okay. All right. Thank you. And then we, we have another question here. Does the IRS sponsor or host a comprehensive workshop regarding filling out tax documentation? Uh, the answer is yes. And we have a number of resources that we shared earlier, uh, both available to uh, to businesses as well as individuals. Uh, the, the Small Business uh, Center has some information as well as the faith-based uh, and churches section. Uh, there's information there about trainings. We have um, a 10-part series for small businesses. Some of those are pre-recorded webinars. Uh, so that information is available 24 hours a day and you can access that by going online as well. Okay, now let's see what other questions we have. Um, okay, 
Okay, another question we have, this one relates to individuals. Um, how do I know if I'm required to file a tax return? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll take a stab at that one. Um, it, it really depends on the facts and circumstances of your, of your, um, of your situation. Um, and we, rather than try to, to guess or maybe get some more information right now, we have a tool on irs.gov to help determine whether you need to file a return, whether you're required to file a return. And I think even, even if you have a, your, your income level you think may not be high enough to require filing a return, there are a number of credits um, that you may be eligible to receive. So we encourage you to look at the resources online on irs.gov, and that would probably be the best way to determine um, whether you are required to file or if there's any um, incentive for you to file your return this year. Okay. And I also want to add to that, Carolyn, um, like I said, everybody's circumstances may be different when it comes to filing your return. But um, I always tell people, if you have earned income and you have that W-2 or 1099 and you have federal withholding removed, definitely get that money back. Because if you do not put a claim for it in with the IRS, you're not going to get that withholding back. It doesn't matter whether it's $50, $500, $600. If you paid into that federal withholding, put that return in. I mean, and that accounts as well to the, you know, 16, 17 year olds are just starting to work. You know, they don't earn a lot of money during the year if they're part timers and going to school. But if they have their students, but if they have federal withholding, definitely have them file that return um, to claim that withholding, even if the parents are still claiming them on their return. That's important. Thank you. Okay. That's a great point, Sam. Thank you. Um, so Sam, I have a question for you. Does the, and you might've touched on this earlier, does the Taxpayer Advocate Service offer in-person help or virtual help? Um, we haven't done virtual help even through the pandemic and some of the offices are walk-ins. However, um, we are still closed. Um, we're not setting up any appointments yet that will come up at a future date. So there are some of our sites um, in the New York area that do accept walk-ins. Um, but you definitely have to have your advocate assigned first. So um, the proper way to do it or to begin would be to get a case opened in the taxpayer advocate first. And then at that point, if your advocate is in a walk-in site, then you set up an appointment and you can definitely do face-to-face. -face. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, and we have another question. I think, Sam, you touched on this before. Uh, what are the tax responsibilities of a nonprofit organization? Okay, yeah, on the slides, there are links as well to the nonprofits. Uh, that's a lot of information. That's a, a hard question to answer um, without knowing specifics. Um, but it depends what type of nonprofit. Do you have a filing requirement? Sometimes it's just an informational return. It, it, it all depends. That's a, unfortunately, it's a, it's a difficult question to answer without me asking more questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. But those links, like I said, the links will have a lot of information on that. Okay. All right. Perfect. And then another question we have here is, how do I become a volunteer with one of the VITA sites? So uh, perhaps for Brooklyn College as well as Medgar Evers, are there opportunities for individuals to volunteer? Well, from Brooklyn College, this is student-based. So we only have students doing the tax returns. And, and again, they're getting three credits for, for this. We don't have anybody we don't really allow anybody to volunteer to provide the services it's all student based and the students have to be certified by the irs uh, they have to take an online test so a actual tax returns are done by students who passed a uh, a uh, vita um a series of tests online but uh, we are doing it in person the tax returns itself are done in person. 
Okay, so I'll go next. For Mega Evers, yes, you definitely have an opportunity to volunteer. The tax returns are prepared by our students as well as the public. We go through a rigorous process with that in terms of you, you my contact information is there. Um, you register with me and we Mega Evers actually does the training themselves at Mega Evers or but now we do the trainings virtually. We have a four week process that you go through that you do the trainings in January. So everyone is welcome. You have to pass the exams and we have a requirement that if you are tax preparer, you have to do up to the advanced level of training. The IRS offers basic and advanced. We mandate the advanced level to be able to be a tax repairer and we go through the process where we verify you in terms of how making sure who you are in your id and ensuring that you have good character so we open it to the public and to our students for our students if you're a student at mega you do get um um points by your professor because we, she, we as a chair she um she encouraged um if you a profess um to let your professors know that you actually participated in that just in case you need extra time or anything of that sort so um it's a great opportunity just um reach out to me you have to be registered by the end of december and then you must do the trainings with us at mega evers in the months of january and trainings normally occur the first week in january all the way and it's four weeks of trainings on saturdays mm -hmm. okay great information thank you so much okay we received another question uh, this relates to an individual, uh, it sounds like an individual issue. I am having trouble uh, getting my IRS transcript to the SBA for a loan. Where can I get help? Um, th it's without knowing um, details of, of what's happening with the account, um, we can provide some general information. Um, it is possible that your return is still processing, and if there is a hardship associated associated with um, with getting the loan from the SBA, we encourage you to reach out to the Taxpayer Advocate Service, or perhaps contact your congressional office. Um, for example, or if you're in Congresswoman Clark Clark's office, um, send them a um, a signed copy of the return and they'll have you fill out a privacy release form and they can send that over to us and we will take a look at it to see uh, what status updates we were able to provide. I, I also, Carolyn, if you don't mind, I also see another question here regarding um, not receiving their 1099G and how do they claim these funds? Um, I would begin by reaching out to the unemployment office to see if they can mail you a copy of that 1099G once again in order for you to file that with your income. Um, if you don't get a response from them, the IRS um, should have that information if the unemployment office provided it to them. That's also another way that you can get that. Okay, great. Thank you so much. So as we get close to the top of the hour, I think we, we've, we've answered um, many of the questions and some of them relate to some of the same topics. So with that, um, we can uh, turn it over to um, Medgar Evers and then Brooklyn College for any closing remarks. And of course, uh, Mr. Ross and Congresswoman Clark's office, if you wanted to say any concluding remarks before we wrap up. Um, we'll open the floor up to you. Hi, everyone. I just want to thank everyone for participating in this amazing event for the faith-based organizations and nonprofits. I want to give my thanks to the IRS for coming in. I want to give my thanks also to Dr. Williams and Dr. Durham and, and Professor Langer from from their respective community, communities, specifically Mega Evers and Brooklyn College. And I would like to thank Dan um, Kalbomitz for also helping us out with this amazing event. Again, um, Carolyn, you shine. You guys did a great job 
If you need any other information, feel free to drop your information in the chat and we will follow up as, as accordingly. Again, have a great day, a blessed day, and thank you guys for showing up for this amazing event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you everyone. That concludes today's uh, today's session. Um, please contact Congresswoman Clark's office if you uh, need any of the slides or questions about the VITA programs at Brooklyn College or Medgar Evers. Thank you everyone. Have a great day. Thank you.